What should you do and see in Santorini? That is a big question and pretty much every single video of this channel focuses on that. But if you want to have a quick overview on all the different possibilities on the island, then this video is made for you. Hey guys, welcome to Santorini Explained. My name is Sebastian, I'm a tour guide here in Santorini and today we're talking about all the things you can do and see in Santorini. And yes, it is windy today. So I classified all the activities in 11 categories and I tried to rank them by importance in my opinion. The first category or the villages. If you think of Santorini, the first image that will pop in your head are these whitewashed houses and blue domes. However, you are mistaken if you think that all around the island you can find those. 80% of the islands is farmland. So if you want to see those beloved blue domes, you will have to go inside the villages. The most famous ones are Ia, Fira, and Imerovigli. But then you also have three other places, much less touristy, but as beautiful. Megalochori, Pirgos, and Emborio. Now in second position comes the must-do hike of Santorini. The walking trail from Fira to Ia. It's a 10 kilometer hike with stunning views. It will take you around three hours and the path is pretty easy. Be careful though, if you hike it in July or August, it can get really hot, so don't be out there between midday and 4 p.m. If 10 kilometer is too long for you, there's also a shorter version from Fira to Imerovigli. That's around one hour. This hike is one of the things I do here as a tour guide. If you want to do this hike and you're looking for for more practical information, I made an entire video on it, which you can find right here. In third position come the boat excursions. There are roughly two types of boat tours in Santorini. One, the catamaran tours, which go to the red, white and black beaches of Akrotiri. The hot springs, Firasia Island and its very clear water, and Ia. And two, the volcano tours that let you go on the volcano, also called Neakameni Island, followed by the hot springs, and then Thirasia. Volcano tours are much cheaper than catamaran tours, but on the other hand, they don't include all the perks of the catamaran tours, like food, drinks, and hotel pickup. In fourth position, we have wine tastings. In case you didn't know, Santorini wines are very special because of the volcanic soil we have here, giving a very different taste to the wine. So if you're a wine lover, visiting a winery should absolutely be on your list. There are a dozen wineries on Santorini. They all have very good wines, but if you're looking for something a bit more traditional, then there are three wineries I would recommend recommend you. Ravalas, Canavarusos or Gatsidakis. If you'd rather go to a winery with an amazing view, especially at sunset, then it's Santo Wines or Venezanos. Our fifth category are the adventure tours. Here's a list of all the outdoors activities you can find in Santorini. Kayaking, scuba diving, jet skis, fishing tours, horse riding, ATV tours and electric bike tours. They're all very fun and interesting in their own way. And if you're into outdoor stuff, I would advise you to go on at least one of them. Next, we have food tours and cooking classes. If you're a food lover, you will really enjoy those. Greek food is famous for being super tasty and healthy at the same time. But as a tourist, when you come here in a restaurant, you might not always know what to order. What are the meals that are traditional to Santorini specifically? And going on a food tour or cooking class will definitely answer all these questions. If you're a foodie, by the way, you can also subscribe to this channel because I'm working on a video on what to eat in Santorini. If that video is live already, I will link it right here. Otherwise, you can just subscribe to the channel. In seventh spot, we have archaeological sites. There are two of them, the Akrotiri excavation site and the ancient Thera site. The Akrotiri site is a prehistoric settlement from 2000 years before Christ. It's also called the Pompeii of Greece because of the volcanic eruption of 1600 BC, which entirely covered the village, preserving it really well. This excavation site also has its own museum located in Fira called the Museum of Prehistoric Thera. It contains all the artifacts found so far during the excavations. The other archaeological site are the ruins of ancient Thera, inhabited from 800 BC to 700 AD. Even though the view from up there is really beautiful, in my opinion it's a bit less interesting than the Akrotiri site. Next we have museums. The biggest one in Santorini after the prehistoric museum I just mentioned is the Museum of the Lost Atlantis. It's a very fun and interactive museum that tries to make links between the Lost Atlantis myth of Plato and Santorini. 
Then there's Gizi Megaron in Fira. This museum traces Santorini's history all the way back from the 13th century until this day, with countless paintings and old black and white photographs from the island. Next we have the Naval Museum in Ia, a small museum that focuses on how Greeks and Santorini people specifically became extremely rich during the 18th and 19th centuries through naval trade. Alright, our next category are photo shoots. Now this one is a bit hard to rank because it all depends what kind of holidays you want to have in Santorini. If this is your honeymoon for instance you'll probably rank photo shoots at a higher spot than I did. Anyway all rankings aside photo shoots are a big thing in Santorini. There are many professional photographers here so if you want to book a photo shoot it definitely won't be difficult. In 10th spot we have open air cinemas. There are two. One in Kamari a beautiful and very big cinema which plays all the latest Hollywood movies with great subtitles and two the Vulcan cinema in Fira which is more a bar with a bit screen than an actual cinema but the view is amazing. They usually play either Mamma Mia or My Big Fat Greek Wedding. And last in our ranking we have the beaches. Unfortunately Santorini beaches are not that nice. These pebbles we have here are very uncomfortable to walk on, not only because of their shape but also because they're black and they attract the heat of the sun. Also the color of the water is pretty dark because of the black pebbles, so the green or turquoise water as you can find anywhere else in Greece, well you won't really see that in Santorini. Anyway, one thing is for sure, if your main focus is to spend a lot of time on the beach, then Santorini should not be your destination. In that case, go to Mykonos, go to Milos, hell go to literally every other Greek island but not Santorini. As I mentioned in the start of this video I'm a tour guide here in Santorini. If you want to know more about that you can check out my Instagram page. If you want to be a very nice person and you want to support this channel by doing a one-time donation you can follow the link down below and if you've enjoyed everything you've seen so far you can also hit the like button. Now you might have realized I haven't mentioned anything about sunsets despite it being a very big deal in Santorini. Well that's because I made an entire video on that specifically with a few secret sunset spots I love to go to and that video is right here and this one is about how many days I recommend you to stay in Santorini because as you just heard there are many things to do in Santorini and you might be wondering how many days do I need for all of this well the answer is right there. Alright that's it for me I hope you liked it see you in the next one bye